Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe. I got a comment from Zach Coltrane, 4709. He says, Near Death Experience, Saints, Volume 1, page 373, Phoebe Woodruff sees two angels. So thank you, Zach, for pointing this out. He knows that I have a spreadsheet called Timeline, Visions, and Visitations, where I'm keeping track of any time that like a heavenly messenger or somebody from the other side of the veil or even, you know, Satan or his followers appear. And uh, there's different ways that that can happen. Sometimes it's visitations where they are physically present. Other times there's visions. Other times there's dreams. Other times there's near-death experiences. And that's what we're talking about with this one. It's a near-death experience. So uh, this is from the 1830s. I have a running tally at the bottom here. Um, by decade and so far the 30s has the most with 15 of these experiences after that it's the 1820s but I have uh, experiences that come all, come up all the way to the 2010s I wouldn't be surprised if by the time I'm done with this I have at least one for each decade uh, probably multiple but it's just going to take time for me to hunt these down and uh, thank you to people like Zach that um find these and send them to me because I don't know when I would have gotten to this if ever you know I, I think at some point in the future I'll read the saints but I'm not sure if I will I I, I hope to but there's just a lot of stuff I want to read okay so um first let's go ahead and read from saints uh you can read saints on the church website um and also in the gospel library okay as the saints prepared to abandon far west that's in Missouri. Phoebe Woodruff lay on a roadside, lay in a roadside inn in Western Ohio. So this is where it's taking place in Western Ohio, not necessarily Kirtland, but somewhere uh, in like the other side of the state, suffering, suffering from severe headaches and a fever. She and Wilford have been traveling West for two months with Fox Island saints, plodding through snow and rain to reach Zion. Illness had attacked many of the children, including her daughter, uh, Sarah Emma. Two families had already dropped out of the company, convinced that they could not make a design that winter. Okay, now, from here, so that's kind of like the background. From here, as always, I like to go to primary sources. Uh, not that saints isn't reliable. Of course it is. It was put together by the church. But I think if you're doing research, you need to get to uh, the original source. So... I looked in uh, the Wilford Woodruff papers, and it doesn't tell in the in the Wilford Woodruff papers. It doesn't share the near death experience, at least not where I looked, unless it's recorded some other in some other place. Um, but thankfully, there is this. We're looking at the Church History Catalog, uh, Historical Department, Journal History of the Church, eighteen thirty to two thousand eight. Okay. So this is on page, um, when you're counting the pages this way, 589. And it appears that this is like, I don't know, like a, a journal entry or something copied down from uh, Wilford Woodruff. It says, on this day, October 9th, Elder Wilford Woodruff left Scarborough. And then it says, following is Elder Woodruff's graphic account of this eventful journal. Um so I guess it's like an excerpt or it's copied from his journal. Okay, so you have to skip forward just a couple pages to page 591. And this is where our story, our story starts. Okay. We parted with them on the 21st of November near uh, New Portage, Summit County, Ohio. On the 23rd of November, my wife Phoebe was attacked with a severe headache, which terminated in brain fever. Uh, she grew more and more distressed daily as we continued our journey. It was a terrible ordeal for a woman to travel in a wagon over rough roads, afflicted as she was. At the same time, our child was also very sick. The 1st of December was a trying day to my soul. My wife continued to fall or to fail and in the afternoon, about four o'clock, she appeared to be struck with death. I stopped my team, and it seemed as though as though she would breathe her last would breathe her last lying in the wagon. 
Two of the sisters sat beside her to see if they could do anything for her in her last moments. I stood upon the ground in deep affliction and meditated. I cried unto the Lord and prayed that she might live and not be taken from me. I claimed the promises the Lord had made unto me through the prophets and patriarchs, and soon her spirit revived, and I drove a short distance to a tavern and got her into a room and worked over her and her babe all night and prayed to the Lord to preserve her life. In the morning, the circumstances were such that I was under the necessity of removing my wife from the inn and as there was no as there was so much noise and confusion at the place that she could not endure it. I carried her out to her bed in the wagon and drove two miles when I alighted at a house and carried my wife and her bed into it with a determination to, to tarry there until she either recovered her health or passed away. This was on Sunday morning, December 2nd. After getting my wife and things into the house and wood provided to keep up a fire, I employed my time in taking care of her. It looked as though she had but a short time to live. She called me to her bedside in the evening and said she felt as though a few moments more uh, would end her existence in this life. She manifested great confidence in the cause she had embraced and exhorted me to have confidence in God and to keep his commandments. Uh, to all appearances, she was dying. I laid hands upon her and prayed for her, and she soon revived and slept some during the night. Okay, let's go to the next page. Next page is blank. Um, so you go to the next one, 593. Okay. Uh, December 3rd, I found my wife very low. I spent the day in taking care of her. And the following day, I returned to Eaton, um, Preble County. And then I don't know what the Ohio, I guess the, the O's for, okay. So Eaton, Preble County, Ohio, to get some things for her. She seemed to be gradually sinking. And in the evening, her spirit apparently left her body and she was dead. The sisters gathered around her body, weeping while I stood looking at her in sorrow. The spirit and power of God began to rest upon me until for the first time during her sickness, faith filled my soul, although she lay before me as one dead. I had some oil that was consecrated uh, for my anointing while in Kirtland, which that's an interesting little detail because essentially in the Kirtland Temple, that's where <laughs> the first... Uh, kind of like rudimentary, uh, what we think of as initiatories were administered where, where there were anointings. Uh, there were other things performed too, like the washing of feet, but there were anointings. So that's kind of interesting. He had some of that oil um, and he used that for her. Okay. It, uh, I took it and, and consecrated it again before the Lord for anointing the sick. I then bowed down before the Lord and prayed for the life of my companion, and I anointed her body with the oil in the name of the Lord. I laid my hands upon her, and in, this, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuked the power of death and the destroyer and commanded the same to depart from her in the spirit of life uh, to enter her body. Her spirit returned to her body, and from that hour she was made whole, and we all felt to praise the name of God and to trust in him and to keep his commandments. While this operation was going on with me, as my wife uh, related afterwards, her spirit left her body and she saw her body lying upon the bed and the sisters weeping. She looked at them and at me and upon her babe. And while gazing upon this scene, two personages came into the room carrying a coffin and told her that they had come for her body. One of these messengers informed her that she could have her choice. Uh, she might go to rest in the spirit world, or on one condition, she could have the privilege of returning to her tabernacle and continuing her labors upon the earth. The condition was, if she felt that, <coughs> excuse me, if she felt that she could uh, stand by her husband and with him pass through all the cares, trials, tribulations, and afflictions of life, uh, which he would be called to pass through for the gospel's sake unto the end. Uh, when she looked at the situation of her husband and child, she said, yes, I will do it. Exclamation mark. At the moment that decision was made, the power of faith rested upon me. And when I administered unto her, her spirit 
re-entered her tabernacle and she saw the messengers carry the coffin out the door or out at the door. On the morning of the 6th of December, the spirit said to me, arise and continue thy journey. And through the mercy of God, my, my wife was uh, enabled to arise and dress herself and walk to the wagon. And we went on next page. We went on our way rejoicing. And, uh, and that's it. It goes on, but it doesn't seem like it has anything else to do with this story. So that is the experience. Uh, that's amazing. Again, just like, you know, we, we've looked at other uh, visions and visitations. Like, I'm thinking about the one where you had these Nephite warriors that were at the Logan Temple because U.S. Marshals were uh, essentially arresting people and trying to get their hands on uh, temple documents because there, there was a crackdown on plural marriage. And um, there were these Nephite warriors that showed up. <clears throat> uh, at this point, I can't even remember. Was it Brother Raskelly? I think he was the temple recorder. Let's see. Control F, Nephite. Yeah, Samuel Raskelly. He was the temple recorder of the Logan, Utah temple. And he like rushed back to the temple and he saw these like three different sets of two Nephite warriors and they were wearing armor and, you know, had the weapons of war. And I, uh, I said in that video, when I did that, that I, I don't think that it's because they were going to like, f <laughs> I don't think it was because they were going to fight off the U S marshals with like spears or swords or anything like that, or like they would need armor. I think that, they appeared that way uh, to Samuel Riskelli so that he would like recognize them. It, it, so it'd be like a testimony building experience and he would recognize kind of like who they were and um, not that they probably had actual armor. I don't know why they would have that. And I feel like that's the case with this, with this near death experience. Cause um, obviously bodies, they steer, they stay here on earth and they go into the ground and Usually that's done by, by other mortals that are left behind, right? Not angels that come. So I think it was probably like a visual thing, um, just part of her unique experience where they come in with a coffin, uh, maybe to help her visualize like, look, you're at the point of death and uh, you can go ahead and go to the spirit world if you want, but uh, you can stay here. But if you stay here, just know that there's more trials and tribulation and things that are going to happen are you okay with that? Is that what you want to do? You have the choice. So anyway, I just wanted to make that little comment. But uh, again, there's just like, there's all these things. I I think sometimes people like that are against the church. Um, I think they portray things as though everything happened to Joseph Smith and it was all just a concoction of Joseph Smith or even, you know, other leaders of the church. But it's become very clear to me, uh, going to these primary sources, to journals and, and stuff like that, that there's so many other people uh, that have seen these things. And I, I'm just recording, this doesn't even include, you know, miracles and other spiritual experiences. I'm just recording contact with heavenly beings or beings on the other side of the veil. And there are so many by so many people. And I know that I'm not done. You know, I, I know that you guys have sent me more. It's just going to take me time to to comb through my emails and uh, potentially comments and stuff. It's, it's just going to take time. But this is such an eye-opening uh, exercise that I've been doing. And I hope that uh, you benefit from it. Um, I hope it's it, build, it helps, you know, build your testimony and just um, increase your faith in things. But it's just it's crazy. Uh, you can access this anytime. The link is in the link for my spreadsheets is in the description box of each video. Uh, the tab that we're looking at is timeline, visions, and visitations. And one more time, thank you, Zach, for sending this to me. And uh, in Zach, I gave you credit in column L. Okay. Um, I may have forgotten some people, so if you sent me something and I don't have your name here, let me know and I'll add it. Uh, sometimes it just it slips my mind. 
but thank you, Zach. Okay, that's going to be it for this one. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.